What is up YouTube, Euclid back here with you again with a newer kind of video. And in today's video, it's going to be something a little different. It's basically, I'm just going to be generally showing you the some rather crude method that I use to remove and replace the cracked screen of a blue Vivo 5. Let's get started. Oh, poor blue Vivo 5. You look pretty on this side, and then you turn it over. What a nightmare. And I've actually already done a little bit of work to it, but will not get onto that. So the blue Vivo 5, you've smashed it, you've dropped it. It's a nice, expensive budget phone, and yet you smashed it anyways, or dropped it, or you relied on this thing that came with it that was supposed to be a case. And if you're an idiot like me and you did that, well, then you probably have a spider webbed, you know, screen. We'll get to the point. I'm going to list a, a few products that I'm using for this video, and you can either choose to get them or get something related, but it's just to give you a general idea of what I use to fix the phone. Let's go ahead and let's get started. We're going to go ahead and get started with the replacement digitizer and screen, which obviously they come together for the blue phone. Nobody intended for you to fix this thing by yourself, but hopefully I'll be able to get you through it. We'll go ahead and start with it. I'll leave a link in the description below for this product as well. And it's actually the product that I had. It came straight from China. Took like around half a month to come here. But it is an exact replica. I accidentally ordered the gold version when I had a silver blue phone. But it comes from Centaurus Electronics. I apologize if I'm rambling, guys. But I'm just kind of tired and I need to get this video done. So, anyways, it comes in a pretty nice box, obviously. And it comes pre-wrapped. And when you open the box, it is fairly nice. And it's pre-wrapped in all this foam. And when you take it out, mine will handle it better than I'm doing, for the love of God. Because this digitizer cost me around $90. So, but it's the digitizer and the screen all together. And as you can see, it is an exact make of the Blue View of 5, which, you know, and it looks nice and everything. And so it should definitely you know, be an adequate replacement for that. We'll just go ahead and set it back in its box. Next up, you're going to want to talk tools of the trade. I'll go ahead and mention that you do not want to super glue this. Super glue each plastic is not something you want to attach to glass. Or obviously, that's what I've been told by people that are actually considered good at this. So, moving on with that, we're going to go and get with that. You need a two-part epoxy, is what it's known as, a very powerful sealant. And I chose to go with this. I'll leave a link for this in the description as well, just in case you want to order it or don't want to leave home. But we were able to get this locally at Walmart basically is where we found it so yeah it's a two-part epoxy it takes about five minutes to set in and you leave it about for about 30 minutes but i'll demonstrate that later and it'll stick and it'll keep the digitizer slash lcd stuck to the phone moving on i want to give a good shout out to the guys at geeks and gear for their 17 piece smartphone repair kit and I don't, they probably didn't expect me to put this in the video. I'm not being paid by any of these providers or anything. You know, I purchased all these online myself. Leave a link for this as well. And in the kit, there's actually several tools that could be used for several projects in the future. First off, you've got the screwdriver, this small thing with a spinny top handle there. Very handy. Forgive my hillbilly terms, but that's pretty much what it is. You've got a set of screws with all the sizes on them labeled and everything. Sorry if that's blurry, guys. Just wanted you to kind of get a close-up of it. And it's pretty handy because you can actually take it out and all that stuff. You've got two plastic screen separators included into the kit. And then you also have this handy little, you know, chip removal kit for both the SD card and the, um, SD, the SD chip and the SIM card, which will be on the side of the blue phone, which I'll show here in a minute as well. And then you also have this plunger kit. So all these tools in this care, you know, repair kit was mainly what I needed except for one other thing I'm going to show you next. So yeah, shout out to the guys at Geeks and Gear. I loved your kit and I plan to use it many times in the future. And I will be buying from them again if I need to. Thanks guys. Moving on, we've got a screen separator tool which is also used for like hard drives and stuff if you want to take stuff apart. And it is the Sesamo separator tool by the guys at Neurotech.com. Here you go. There's other versions of this. There's different you know, makes of it and everything. Some might be stronger, but I found this at a fairly, what I consider a decent price. You might find it cheaper, so look around. You may find a better price than that. Moving on, and this isn't necessary for the repair, but I got this stuff because there aren't very many good cases online. I'll go ahead and show it to you. It is the Amzer Hybrid Warrior case, protector case. And it is, I mean, it feels kind of cheap, but as far as online, the reviews are decent. And combined with another screen protector, it's going to be decent. This is what you're looking at, basically. It is a two-part, like a lot of cheap cases are, set. And it has a plastic outer piece, as you can see. It says answer there. Yeah, right side up there, buddy. 
and then it's got this rubber inner piece. And put together, it's obviously going to provide what might be minimal protection, but better than obviously this flimsy little you know thing right here. It's not going to do much anyways. So you got that, and also as a little memento, you got a little stand on back that you know pops out right there. So that's pretty handy. I like that. But hopefully this will do the job. If not, I'm just going to give I'm going to give my significant other because this is her phone that I'm fixing. I'll give her my Note three. Moving on. So, I also ordered this from a group known as Sparin or Sparin, and it's a screen protector installation kit. And it comes in actually a little, like a little hard box, like it's like almost like a wooden little box. But anyways, when it comes, it comes with this black, what's actually not a cover, but it's actually like a, it is, it's like a tape cover. You go to the side to where it, the crack's revealed, and you have to actually cut down that crack. And it was, I had to use an X-Acto blade to get it pretty good, and as you can see, it missed. But anyways, opening it up, you find several things. This is how mine came prepackaged. There's a little cloth covering it. The actual screen protector, which I'll leave in its bag for now. And then you have this thing, which I've already looked into, obviously. is the uh, brown baggie containing all the things for your installation kit. Just wanted to give them a shout out real quick. Feel free to fast forward to the other part if you are not needing these parts or using them. So I'm just bringing them out there because they were very handy to me. Anyways, starting off, it obviously comes with this little intro card, which is kind of thanking you for what you're doing. As you can see, obviously, it says, you know, happy, thank you for your service. I'm trying to get it to focus there for you. <laughs> I'm failing miserably, as you can see. So, but anyways, it says basically, you know, it has your you know, has their email and everything. If you're not happy, they recommend, obviously, you call their email and, and you know, let them sort the problem out. So that comes with it. And then it comes with a, a little guide, which demonstrates, let me turn this light off. It's blocking everything. And this guide obviously is what, see that's much better. It basically demonstrates how to install it and everything. And probably be better than listening to me. So, and then you got these two dust absorbers, which combined together top by top, each one will cover a, probably exactly half of the Vivo 5 screen to get rid of the dust. And that's important obviously before you apply the protector overneath. The protector combined with the little warrior case that I bought should be enough. And there are not very many cases available online, especially not by blue. I'm shouting out to you, Blue. You need to work on making cases. I know you make budget phones, but you need to at least make cases with them that work well. The Blue Vivo 5 does not come with a good case. Do not trust it. It will shatter regardless. It also comes with a cloth wiggle, and this is all out of the same installation kit baggie, and that's like with any LCD wipe-off cloth. And then two wet LCD wipes, which are safe for the LCD. They're rated, so they're good. And then obviously, these are demonstrated in this little instruction manual I showed you a second ago. And they are obviously used, if you can look real carefully there, they're obviously used like right here and everything. It just shows how to use them. So that's what's all in the little insulation baggie. Again, if you're wondering why you're still here, there are points in the description that where you can go ahead and skip ahead. Okay, guys, it is important to mention that this very thing, the taking away of the screen from the phone, can easily be done, be done by either the slower method with a hair dryer or the quicker method with a heat gun. The fact that I've never seen a video on this phone being taken apart is one of the reasons why I was skeptical about using a heat gun. Honestly, I wanted to avoid you know, hurting the battery, which I found. The batteries in blue phones, like I said, they never blue never intended it for us to fix our own phones. Hopefully, I can you know kind of solve that problem or open the way for somebody who's better at making these videos for you. So, another thing I want to mention is when the blue phone was uh, messed up, there was originally a hole right here on the phone itself you can see my webcam right there and um that hole was something that i was actually able to pry into it with and believe it or not i used an exacto blade so using the exacto blade i was able to pry open there and don't worry about hurting the ribbons of this old lcd digitizer you're not going to use them again unless you keep stuff like that which i wouldn't recommend because it leads to hoarding and you're going to end up prying here and it'll be harder than what it looks like on here but you're kind of kind of here like a You'll hear glass sound like it's shattering and stuff. That's not a bad sign. It's kind of crude, but you just take your time with the pry tool and you make your way up the phone. So, and when you get to about this point, you want to be careful because right here is a screen. Now, there's nothing wrong with cutting that, but it's kind of crude and you don't want to do that. And I'm going to show you exactly why. We'll set this down for a second here. This other LCD. This is the new LCD next to the old one, okay? It's an exact size, exact replacement, as you say it's going to be. But if you look... On the opposite sides there, there's this little ribbon. The ribbon goes to this side. Self-explanatory, I know, but I want to let you know. So that means that where that ribbon is sticking out on that side, the ribbon's going to be sticking out right here. So 
That being said, you're going to eventually cut around, and there is all kinds of like, um, I think it's like two millimeter adhesive tape, double sided, and that stuff is also good for putting this, but I didn't use it in this video. Anyway, Joel, you'll end up removing it, you'll move it onto the sides, and by the point you get all the way around and end up removing this screen, it's going to look something like this when it flips over. That way you kind of know. This is all metal, so this is perfect for the cleaning process because you don't have a risk of really hurting stuff. And this is the ribbon right here. Now, that being said, you want to kind of remove it. I left some of the 2 millimeter adhesive tape because I figured it wouldn't hurt. And I remembered you got to make absolutely sure you remove all the glass from it. But anyways, moving on. What I did was I took my Geeks and Gear tool set or take whatever one you want to have. But, and I took the piece that is known as the... Um, it's the T10 piece located right here with the screwdriver because it's the perfect size for all these different screws. Now, I don't I don't plan on taking the rest of this apart and everything else, but you just take it. There are these two screws right here. As you can see, I'll zoom it in for you. And those two screws, those two tiny screws, are keeping the ribbon cable that attaches the LCD digitizer to the motherboard of the phone. So you just want to remove those two because it just it removes this little metal plate. If you are smart, you'll keep a magnet nearby for this very reason. Okay? You don't want to lose these tiny screws, and it's easy to do just that. So we'll go ahead and leave that right there so we can keep track of them. Almost lost them while I was taking the phone apart just to prepare for the video. So there you go. We got those there. We'll keep that there so we don't lose them. And then you basically can just take it and remove the little metal cover piece. Set it there. Okay. Now... And don't be afraid about breaking anything. Literally, just make sure you got a firm grip on both sides of the old ribbon because you're not going to keep this thing. So don't worry about hurting it. And just pull, and it'll pop right off, okay? So there you go. Little latch. It's just a tiny computer, guys. So it's kind of scary dealing with these little delicate things, but now we have it. This thing is going to work, trust me. There is glue, and there is old epoxy around the entire baseline of the phone. And if you look really carefully at the phone itself, you will see... A little tiny ridge there I know it's a little blurry guys I apologize but there is going to be a little tiny ridge along the phone on all sides make sure you remove all the epoxy and all the glass two millimeter tape I mean I probably should go ahead and remove that but I'm gonna leave it there to kind of cushion where the webcam and every you know where the little uh, camera not webcam but where the camera is on the phone so that being said we'll go ahead and move on to the next phase I will take this tool and I'll use its back so the back side of the sesame tool the sesamo tool of the newer tech you know and uh, there's always a little bit more epoxy left and i have been just trying to get rid of all of it and the shards of glass and it literally took me a long time but i was still skeptical about using a heat gun i didn't have one and i don't have the patience to wait on one i'll probably get one in the future if i do another one of these videos i know i'm rambling but i just want to make sure that you guys don't screw it up so that being said Throughout all this, I ended up removing all this stuff, and after I'm done removing it, we'll be right back. Okay, guys, with the Gorilla Glue, what you're going to want to do is you're basically going to break off this centerpiece right here, which is right here. You break it off, and then you're going to, there's a twist part right here that connects the two right here. You break it off. Go ahead and set those to the side there. And you're basically going to take the little mixing tray or whatever with it, or find a little cup or tray, something you want to dispose of. And you're basically going to go squeeze a select amount into it. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and take this little stick that comes with a little mixing stick. And then you mix it for like but it's telling me about 20 seconds at least. So mix it. And it's going to become even more clear once you start to mix it. Okay. I know I'm doing a sloppy job, but we really don't need a lot here. Because we're going to be applying this with a toothpick. Another thing I should have mentioned. <laughs> okay. That should pretty much be good. So we'll do that. And do that and everything else. We go ahead and pull our phone up. Put the mixing thing there to the side. Pull our phone up and everything. And this is all here. So, that being said, we're going to go ahead and we're going to take our toothpick. And you have five minutes, basically, to 
to apply this stuff wherever you need it to go. And I am going to basically apply it down all these sides there. And we'll be quick about it. Kind of sloppy, but like it is, guys. It is a budget phone. And I've not seen another video on this. I'm just some frustrated dude who was going to fix it and figure he might as well put the video out there anyways. Because now you know what it looks like. Kind of be fast about it. I mean, not super fast. You got five minutes, but the longer you take to put the epoxy on, you know, obviously the <laughs> I'm kind of slopping it everywhere. But the longer you take to put the epoxy on, obviously the, the less effective the sticky adhesive nature of it will be. So you want to kind of be a little faster about it there. So there I am. I'm kind of like forking it up as if you would, you know, you kind of roll it there, get a little glob and put it there. I'm definitely trying to glob it and try to avoid the screws in case you need to take it apart in the future like I'm doing horribly <laughs> be careful around these cameras too so it doesn't glob out too much we're making halfway decent time we almost got all the way around but we don't want to waste too much so Yeah, and try to get it on those little ridges on the sides that I showed you earlier. That's important too. Yeah, it's honestly first time using it, guys. Kind of winging it here, and if I'm satisfied with the results, I'll post this video. <laughs> That's kind of what I'm going for here. We're just winging it with everything we do. All righty. I hope you, you guys can somewhat see that. And then the top part, obviously. And it's important to mention that, like I said, it takes about five minutes for this stuff to go on and take effect. But you got five minutes to stick it. You don't have five minutes just to lay it. Just five minutes to stick it. So the faster, the better. But also try not to gloop and globby it everywhere, kind of like I am. <laughs> I was always told to apply with a toothpick or a needle of some sort. That's what I was told. So I'm going to apply it the best I can and hope for the best. If it works, well, I guess you guys got a method. But also, this is your choice to follow it. You can't go, you know, I tried this and it didn't work. I mean, I'm just winging it myself, guys. So bear with me here, okay? You know, stuff's already kind of sticking to my skin a little bit. Yikes. And now nah, we'll too, too much there, not too much there, and just a little bit, a little dabby dab there, and hopefully, uh oh, want to remove that, remove that, get that away. Where's that cloth at? Oh boy, that ain't good. As you can see, I kind of got some near the the frontal facing webcam there. I'm gonna kind of. Get it away. <laughs> a little bit of a emergency, so to speak. I think we might be a little late on that. So, hopefully not, but you know, there's no time like the present, right? So, now, we're going to take this, and we're going to remove all the stickers from it. All of them. You want to hold this down. Probably should do this before, FYI. <laughs> And remove it all, every bit of it. There's a couple different layers. And and this is a time where you kind of want to quickly, and I mean quickly, apply this. 
Take the screwdriver. You're kind of timing yourself here, really. Be faster than me. If I have to redo it, I'll redo it. Okay, that's on. That's taken care of. And you can take all the remaining stickers off. I probably will not. I don't have much of a choice, do I? So, that being said, all the stickers are off. And you can now apply the screen. I'm just going to hold it down. There's a cover over it, which should definitely do the job. So we'll come back after it's done being glued down. So, Alrighty guys, moment of truth. It's been about half an hour with it being held down. I actually ended up putting like a empty coffee cup on top of it, just gently that way it wouldn't break. There's all kinds of smog and crap on it, but I chose not to remove the layer that came on the replacement screen, the exact screen I'm sending the link for, by the way, in the comments. I left the little replacement tag that had the red indicator on it on. We'll go ahead and we'll peel that off now. There you have it. If you look at the sides, there's gonna be some materials to the sides, but I'm honestly not worried about it. We we'll go ahead and we'll see if it turns on. Blue. Bold like us. And dear God, I can't believe I fixed it. <laughs> I'm honestly super surprised. Oh, that's a good feeling. Yeah. The girlfriend's going to be happy. We'll just say that. Ah! Spare screen stuck to my desk. And there you go. And that is how you fix the uh, replacement screen. That's actually how you replace the screen for the blue Vivo 5. So, yeah, guys, there you have it. So, if you try this method and you try it my way, <laughs> good luck. But if you try it a different way and it's proven to work even better, good deal. And if you do, feel free to share that in the comments below. So, you know, guys, stick around for more of my videos if you would like. But until next time, I'm Euclid Gamer, and I'll see you guys in the next video.